Okay, good afternoon. So, um, I'm going to talk about the theory of consumer choice. Okay, consumer, in some books, see consumer behavior. Yeah, so, uh, this theory basically talks about how people make rational decisions and then how they go about um, purchasing goods with a particular income and then the goods to are picked at a particular price. Okay, so we'll be very quick with it and then uh, we move on. So, in this chapter, we look for answers to this question. So, how does the budget constraint represent the choices we can afford? So, we look at budget constraint, we look at how preferences are, we see indifference curves in them, among other things. Okay, so introduction. So, we are going to um, start with a recap. So, people face trade off. So, I'm, I believe you all remember what trade off means trade off is M. Um, when people give up something to get the other, so buy more one good leaves less income to buy the other. Working more hours to means more income and then more consumption and then less leisure time. Okay, so, and then other examples. So this chapter explores how consumers make choices like these. So you talk about the first thing, which is budget constraint. So as a constraint, when you say a constraint is like a limit. Okay, so what the consumer can afford. Example, highly divides income is between two goods, fish and a mango. Its consumption bundle is a particular combination of goods. Example, 40 fish and 3 and a mango. So when you say a consumption bundle, you are just talking about combinations of two goods. The, the assumptions underlying this is that the consumer can purchase only two goods, okay, and then he spends all his income on those two goods. So a budget constraint is a limit of the consumption bundles that a consumer can afford so let's assume you are having a uh, um, five cities okay your budget constraint is five cities you cannot move above five cities neither can you you cannot move above five cities and then you can buy something below four cities but for consumers to maximize satisfaction they will spend more of their income if they have some left okay so that they will be satisfied so you move up and up until they get to the budget line so in subsequent slides you will get to see and know what the budget constraint look like okay so it's like the it's like a ppf and this one is the consumer possibility frontier okay so as i said we'll see more examples to that so Harley's income is 1200 and then the price of fish yeah, it's four dollars per unit and then the price of mango so he spends income on fish and mango if Harley spends all his income so these are the things that we are going to consider he spends all his income on fish how many fish does he buy and then likewise if he spends all on mango how many mangoes can he buy so if he buys 100 fish how many mangoes can he buy so for this one just if you want to find the when he spends all his income how many fish can he buy just divide the total income by the price of the fish total income by price of the fish so we're going to get um, um total income so income is y divided by the price okay that will give you the amount that you can, the number or the quantity you can buy for that particular good okay and then you plot each of the bundles from parts a to c on the graph and then um let me let's move to yeah so this is our budget um a graph okay it's a graph so i'm going to put the curve uh, the points you have gotten on it okay so if he's buying only fish he's going to buy 300 pieces of fish so on the fish axis which is this particular line he buys 300 that's the red line over there and if he's buying uh, mangoes he's buying mangoes is one dollar so he's buying 1200 mangoes okay so that's the line and if he buys 100 fish he will it will cost him 400 and remaining 800 to buy 800 mangoes okay so that would be the line so at the end of the day are going to draw a straight line to join those points that becomes the budget constraint okay that becomes your budget constraint now if you check this budget constraint is it a line outside the line it means his income will not be up to this as you're having 100 cities you want to buy efforts which cost 170 cities can you buy no so your consumption for your your uh, purchase for air mass or air force will be at this point and then if you are having 100 and then yeah we want to buy slippers it costs 20 cities 20 cities will be here 
and since you have more income you like to shift your uh, consumption outward okay you like to consume more until it gets to this budget line and then you cannot buy any more okay so the slope of the budget constraint okay is is more like the demand curve and then it has a slope except the line is a straight line um so i mean an, a horizontal line that line does not have a slope but since it's looping down from left to right it will have a slope okay so how do you find a slope y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x2 the same concept over here okay so um so that's the representation here 200 mangoes and then 50 fish so just the slope is always going to be negative because of the downward sloping and there's an inverse relation so it means that Hali must give up four mangoes to get one fish okay that's what the slope means give up four mangoes to get fish yeah that's it so the slope of the budget line the rate at which Hali can trade off mangoes for fish and then opportunity cost in terms of mangoes okay so similar to the relative price so when, when you see a question like what's the relative price of a good is the opportunity cost and then it's the same as the slope of the budget line okay so the relative price of fish is the price of fish over the price of mangoes okay so if they say relative price of mangoes is the price of mangoes over the price of fish which would be one over four okay so how or show what happens to Harley's budget line when it's income for so we are going to talk about changes in the budget line in the first instance there was no change in any of the um, underlying conditions so prices were constant income was constant now there are going to be changes in it and then we'll see what happens to the budget line so his um the first one when income falls to 800 and then secondly when price of mangoes rise to two dollars per mango so that's what i'm going to check over so we have our first budget line which was he buying once uh, one 1200 mangoes and then 300 quants of fish okay now the income drops to 800 he can now buy only 200 fish and then he'll buy 800 mangoes so what do you realize that there's a shift a bodily shift in the uh, budget constraint downward so this tells us that when there's a decrease in income the budget line shifts downwards or inward okay so the opposite of this is when there's an increase in income okay a decrease in income causes by the budget line to shift to the left or inward and increase causes it to shift rightward or outward okay so you can note it down and then the second part is um, when the price of mangoes now increase to two dollars now what do you see over here the whole budget line doesn't move but there's a pivot at one point where does the pivot come in where the price does not change so the price of fish remain constant and then the price of mangoes rather reduced so you are going to have Hali buy only 600 mangoes after the price of mangoes um increase i know when there's an increase in price there's a decrease in quantity so going to decrease this quantity from 1200 to 600 mangoes okay so the slope is smaller relative uh, relative price of fish is now two so relative price of fish is the price of fish over the price of mango okay so somebody can ask you in a question that um when uh, let's assume when the price the price of this is this price of the other one is this when the price increases what happens to the slope then the question will be like it becomes flatter it becomes steeper yeah so as i was saying the, the question can ask you what happens to the slope or what happens to the budget line you can see it becomes steeper so this one it has become um flatter okay if you rather move from this green one to the um black one then it, it means it has rather become steeper okay so the question can be in any form just note if the question can just draw your budget line and then know what's okay the more you, you solve more when you solve more questions you get to know even up head okay then um preferences what consumers want okay the first one is what consumers can afford and now what do they want okay what do consumers want so in difference curve the show so in difference curve that's the eye over here this one it shows the combination um sorry it shows the uh, consumption bundles that give the consumers the same level of satisfaction 
one time. Yeah. Same level of suspect. So on A and B, it means when he consumes A, he is equally satisfied as consuming B. Okay. Yeah, he's equally happy. And then when we say someone is indifferent, it means like he doesn't prefer one to one. Let's assume there's a um living at uh East Legon and then Chataco. Okay, let's assume they all have the same topography. All have the same structure of buildings, they all have swimming pools in their house, and you like all of them. Okay, now when you ask which one do you like, you can even yeah. choose to toss a coin and then wherever it's for you go because you like apparently like all of them. Okay, so that's when we say a consumer is indifferent. So if there are two points in an indifferent scale, it means that the consumer doesn't prefer one to one, he likes both. Okay, so um, how is yeah, these are some properties of the indifference scale. Okay, properties of yeah. So the properties so indifference scales are downward sloping. So as we can see, they are downward sloping. Why? Because of trade off. Okay, so it's more like a demand curve. Now note that the demand curve is not necessarily a straight line. Okay, not necessarily a straight line. Okay, you can take this form too, but the concept behind it is that it should be downward sloping from left to right. Okay, so if the quantity of fish is reduced, the quantity of mangoes must be kept increasing to keep uh, highly equally happy. Okay, so and then one thing to see is that they are parallel, and then consumers prefer higher indifference curves than lower ones. Okay, so when on this, I pay. It means that he's going to get more satisfaction compared to uh, I1 and then I0. So definitely they want more satisfaction. So they go for the one on the higher one. Okay, that's explained here. And then the next property is that they do not cross. Okay, so I'm going to make a quick this one and then. So let's assume at the point that they meet is point A. Sorry. At the point that they meet is point A, let's assume there's B over here and then there's C. Yes, yeah, so the example so A, B, and C. So from this point, if they say all oh, the points in any friends can view the same satisfaction, it means that C. <coughs> I don't know if you are if you will be getting what I'm saying, but I will illustrate it in a few slides. So C is equal to A. Okay, so these are the points I'm trying to make. So C. So the, the meeting point is A and then B. Okay, so from what I just drew, it means C is equal to A. And then A is equal to B from, let's say, this I2 and then I1. From I1 and I2. So from I1, from I1, we can see that C is on the same line with A. So C is equal to A. And then I2 is um, A. Is equal to B, so you can see, but mathematically, if A is equal to C and then uh, A is equal to B, then it means that A should be uh, sorry, C should be equal to B, right? But on this outline, the C is not equal to B. I don't know if you are seeing what I'm trying to mean. If A is B and then C is also A, then you can say that A. A is equal to C, A is equal to B. So it means that C should be equal to B. But here, C is not equal to B. Therefore, this concept does not exist. I don't know if you understand. If you don't understand, please, you can you can send me a message in my, in my DM and then I'll be glad to explain it vividly to you. Okay. Good. So suppose they did. Okay. So that's the explanation they are given. I just read it to you. can pause the video and then read to you. Good. And the indifference curves are about shaped towards, so they are about towards the origin. Okay. So they are willing to give more fish. Yeah. So the same point I explain why it is downward sloping and all. Yeah. So this is just an illustration. Yeah. So we have what we call marginal rate of substitution. Okay. That is the slope of the indifference curve. The slope of the indifference curve. So the rate at which a consumer is willing to trade off. One good for another, that's what we call the marginal rate of substitution. So, Halley's MRS is the amount of mangoes you would substitute for one fish. Okay, so that's the illustration. It's just the same as the slope. Okay, but at every point, it might have different one because the curve is not a straight line, 
means it doesn't have a constant slope unlike the, the normal demand curves that we know it doesn't have a constant slope right so M, uh, mrs force as you move down along the indifference curve and which is true you can prove it with the nature of the curve okay so extreme case sorry but extreme like case yeah so these are just um extreme cases of perfect substitutes and then the some complements okay so you can just read through they are understandable and then complement these are this is how their indifference curves look like you can just pause it and then yeah Okay, so we continue with something we call optimization. Okay, what the consumer chooses. Now we have what the consumer can buy and then what the consumer wants. Okay, now we combine the two and then we, we talk about what the consumer chooses. So what do you choose? Now what you choose depends on what you want and then your income. Okay, so we have a budget line. The budget line we do in the first instance. And then we have some indifference curve. Now where the indifference curve and the budget line meet, we call... Yeah, so optimization is um where both of them is so they can ask you at what point does the consumer optimizes uh, utility. Okay. So is that the point where his budget constraints or his indifference curve is tangent? No, his budget constraints is tangent to the indifference curve. Right. So at the points, yeah. So this is what we mean. Okay, so you can just read to take a glance by the whole concept is that where the budget line meets the indifference curve so what he means is that at the first point there he has at point c um let's assume he has 1200 to consume and then point c can buy some quantities of good but the money to buy those goods is just maybe um 800 cities like you can you spend 800 cities now because he has more money left and then consumers want to maximize satisfaction they will continue to consume now we get to point a he might still want to consume though so we try to move to point b but at point b his money won't be up to so what does he do that place is unattainable because of income constraints so we need to come back to point a which becomes a point where he can consume and then be be at optimization okay so where uh, your um but indifference curve equals the slope of the budget line okay that's where so where mrs is equal to the price of fish over price of mangoes right yeah so that's it so consumers optimization is another example of thinking at the margin that's true also so effect of an increase in income so an increase in income shift the budget line as well so we discussed that in a few minutes ago so for if both goods are normal when we say they are normal it means that um they, they go with the normal the, the normal law of demand so an increase in price they buy less an increase in income they buy more so you can see that his consumption for um mangoes increase and then consumption for uh, fish also increased okay so that's the graph over there my one is an inferior good and one is a normal good then there's a difference between that right so they can talk about inferior and the normal goods. An increase in the income um, increases the quantity demand for normal goods and reduces the quantity demand for inferior goods. So if fish is an inferior good, so let's assume, yeah, so fish is an inferior good. That's what I can talk about. I was going to buy um, fish as a normal good and then uh, mangoes are inferior goods. So you're going to buy more of fish, less of mangoes. So it's indifference care wouldn't be at this point. So you notes know, where you put your indifference curve depicts whether like what types of goods the two are. Okay. So if it's here, you know that this one is a normal good. If your budget line was here and then maybe touching at this point, then you could know that um your mangoes is a normal good and then um the other one is an inferior good. Okay. Good. So so another example I think effect of changes in price. So the same thing, change in price rotates or causes a uh, rotation in the budget constraints. Yeah. So now when you rotate where you plot your indifference curve uh, is dependent on what type of good it is. Okay. So if it's a normal good, nowhere you plot when it's an inferior good. So for normal good, 
so they said here um Ali buys more fish and then less mangoes that's yeah, if mangoes are inferior yeah so if mangoes are inferior this is what happens okay when there's an um, increase um, sorry a fall in price okay then we have what we call income effect and then substitution effect so income effect sorry so income effect so a fall in income effect is just like um your let's assume when there is a change in price your purchasing power after the change in price okay then how many you can buy how much more you can buy one good and then substitution effect is when there's a change in price how you respond to the change in price okay there are two goods in question so income effect a fall in price boosts the purchasing power because when there's a fall in price the amount um you would have left after purchasing the one good is more so you have more money to buy more of other goods substitution effect is that one good becomes expensive relative to the other and then you buy fewer mangoes and then more fish so the net effect on mangoes is ambiguous okay so income effect and then substitution effect for this one we need critical um you need to you need to critically pay attention to this particular one okay and it does the concept of equivalence we have something called compensating uh sorry concept of variation compensating variation and then um how do you call it um equivalent variation but this one is, is for level higher levels okay so we wouldn't touch much on this but you can just pause the video and then try and understand what they are trying to mean but i'll explain to you maybe in some other time okay so do you think the substitution effect will be bigger for substitute or complement and then uh draw an indifference scale for coke and pepsi and on a separate graph hot dog and then uh hot dog buns on each graph show the effect of the relative price of keeping so this one will do it later so i don't think you should work on this but you can try maybe you can read further and then try and understand but they did it for us so if the goods are substitutes the indifference curve looks much straight and then has some small gradients and then the hot dogs if they are complements then if the indifference curve looks like that too okay yeah so um how is demand care for fish so this is just what we have explained and then this so this one talks about um from this point to this point is uh an increase in price so i decrease in price yeah So just check you can see what happens here and then yeah a decrease in price from four to two dollars and when what happens it changes from increases its quantity demanded from 150 to 350 and then application so do all goods obey the law of demand is the question suppose that the goods are potatoes and then meat yeah so when a, um Suppose there are two goods, meat and potato, and then um, potatoes are inferior goods, okay, and then the price of potatoes rise. The substitution effect is that he buys less of potato because price has risen. <clears throat> and then income effect is that he buys um, more potatoes. So the price of potato has risen. If the price of um, a good rise and it's an inferior good, they tend to buy more of that good, okay, they tend to buy more of that good, that's the income effect. Okay, so income effect becomes greater than substitution effect. Yeah, so this is just as I said, this one is in further level, so you get to see this in level two hundred, and then so I think this is where our and the rest of them are further levels. I like, see them in your higher levels, maybe level two hundred, because that's what we are doing at the moment. Okay, they are just more, 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 more. So I think this is where we are going to end <coughs> the class for this afternoon yeah on i think we should end on this one yeah so have a nice day just watch review any question that you have just um direct the question into my dm my number is zero five zero zero three four one two nine four i think i can just write it here and then zero five zero zero three four one two nine
My name is Wayne Fred. My name is Wayne Fred. So you can just hit me up, okay? When, when, W I N, okay? Have a nice day. See you later. Bye bye.